April the 10th, Detroit beat Winnipeg to equal the NHL record for most victories in one year with 60. Two nights later, another win versus Chicago and 48 hours after that, two points in Dallas to climax with 62 victories against 13 defeats. Perhaps they overindulged. For in the NHL, morning only arrives when Stanley rises and as early as Winnipeg, the horizon was foreboding. Once dominant, the playoff wings were now dreaming up ways to win. Their recent past, anything but put to bed. When your aim and targets don't mesh, it's 41 years and 40 winks. A true nightmare in which you're always a break away. A situated stick, a sticky situation. A hackneyed rendition of a story too often told. And suddenly the money friendly, talent rich face deficit reduction. The Colorado Avalanche's power is a 3-1 series lead. And now the pressure mounts. The odds grow longer while tempers get short. The fine line between dreams and delusion is determined by the drop of a puck. Tonight, for the third time in the 1996 Stanley Cup playoffs, the number one team in the NHL during the season, Detroit, faces elimination. Game five of the Western Conference Finals sees Colorado leading the Red Wings three games to one in anticipation of the fifth at Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. Good evening, welcome to Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. I'm Ron McLean. Eddie Olchek told me a good story about how this series parallels 1994 for the New York Rangers. Back then, the Rangers were number one in the NHL. Expectations on them were like having eight arms wrapped around you. The Rangers went into the playoffs with a big hex. 54 years since they'd won a Stanley Cup. Here in Detroit, of course, it's 1955. That's their albatross. They got into the third round like Detroit's done this year. They were playing the second best team in the league. New Jersey that year fell behind and Mark Messier predicted a win in game six. The media had a frenzy. The Rangers were really nervous. There was huge pressure on them. They were in the room before skating out to the game. And as they were sitting around, all the players tense, wondering really if they could do it at the Meadowlands. Kevin Lowe got up and he said to Mark Messier, well, Mess, I guess we got to win this one. And every man in the room knew that they knew they could win that night. Now, who does Detroit draw on for that kind of experience, that kind of trust and inspiration? We know it won't be young Keith Primo tonight. He's out with bad ribs. He skated this morning, but he's too painful. He can't go. Paul Coffey, bad back and all. He will be in the lineup. So seven defensemen for Detroit when the crowd roars at Joe Lewis tonight to try and spur on their Red Wings. Here are some of the men they'll be cheering. We got someone handsome on this opening finally. Really handsome, I mean, Don. Here, I'll give you the mic. You go ahead and tell us what Detroit's got to do. Well, Detroit's a desperate club, as you all know. It's pretty tough, I'll tell you. The outshoot teams, Colorado has never gotten over 20 shots on net. It's pretty discouraging when you go into a game like that. I don't know. We got an expert here. Colorado play the same game. One guy back, bang him, clear the rebounds for Pat Roy. He's a dynamite. Now we got an expert here, John, Jake Shannon. All right, Jake, tell us who's going to win tonight. Detroit. And up, boy, Jake tells us all about what's happening, and I got to go along with Jake. Desperate times, desperate team. Detroit will win tonight. 
Tell us about the Avalanche and the guy that's impressed you the most, I know, is Mike Ricci. Well, I love Mike Ricci, Scarborough boy. We got a little thing going right here now. He had a tough year, but Crawford says he's the best. And uh, here he goes, he's taking the body. Watch him now. He's in front of the net all the time, unbelievable. He uses his head all the time. I think he needs a haircut though. Takes the body. Watch him standing in front of the net. Watch this goal go in. This is what Detroit's got to do. Can't see the puck. Everybody says Primo is out with the ribs. I say no, he's out with a groin injury. Look what he does to reach his stick. And look what, uh, yes, it is a groin injury. Nothing like the Stanley Cup playoffs as seen through a youngster's eyes and 20,000 fans jammed into Joe Lewis Arena. Getting set for game five, the Detroit Red Wings. All the heats on them next. You're watching live coverage from Detroit, Michigan on Molson Hockey Night in Canada and the Stanley Cup playoffs on CBC. Summer sounds good, but it could sound even better. Oh, yeah. The Coors Light Talking Can and Cap event. You could win the ultimate electronic playroom. A Bang & Olsen audio system. A Sony TV. A compact Rosario. A cool phone and a Walkman. Thousands of prizes to be won. Look for specially marked cases or for entry without product purchase. Call 1-800-225-8255. Must be of legal drinking age. So listen up this summer. The Coors Light Talking Can and Cap event. Sound. 96 Windstar. Mm. Who was talking? I got a do-over. In golf, it's called a mulligan. Fine, fine. Anti-lock brakes, dual airbags, no charge, quad captain's chairs. Mulligan? Go ahead, give it a belt. Uh, a little more power, eh? How about 200 horsepower? Mulligan? Pick one up for 349 a month. It's always been Ford. and Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. By Ford Motor Company of Canada Limited. And by Pepsi Stuff. People who drink it, get it. Closing out the Memorial Day weekend in a big way in Detroit. We're set for game five. Here's Bob Cole and Harry Neal. Bob. Thanks, Ron. Hello again, everybody. Oh, yes. Game five. Patrick Waugh says, as the pressure mounts, I will play better. Can't do much better than he did Saturday night. 31 shots on Patrick. It wasn't enough to win the game. He gave up just the two goals. 17 saves for Osgood in game four. Really, he could not be faulted. Folks, he's playing great goal. Goals against average in the playoffs under two. And here's Kerry Fraser, the referee, Shane Heyer, Wayne Bonney will work the lines. 20,000 plus will try to work these Red Wings into a win tonight. We're going to start with Lidstrom, Ramsey, Marianov, Eiserman, and McCarty. That's the Detroit line. Forsberg, Lemieux, Kamensky, Gusarov, and Foot, the defenseman. And this game five is underway at the Joe Louis Arena. Kamensky pass. It be picked up cleanly. Forsberg knew the hit was coming, and he is solid as a rock on his skates. Number 21, and he's still a youngster for Colorado. Detroit, headman in the puck. Forsberg broke it up. Kaminsky sweeping it over the line with Lemieux. Oh, and a big test for Osgood from guess who? 22, Claude Lemieux. That would have been something had he bagged that one. He was greeted the usual way when he stepped on the ice tonight here in Detroit. You, of course, missing the last game on the suspension. Penaroff couldn't get too far, and Young will move it up for Colorado. Lost it at the line. That was Sackick number 19. Penaroff turning. 
A lot of room for him. But he elects to go back to Pitt. He saw but he gave it away. Troy for cover. Kozlov comes away to center. Fedorov sweeping one way, then the other. Kozlov turned around and couldn't carry on. Puck comes to the center ice area again. Petty saw back. Another big giveaway. Konstantinov will take no chances now and get it out of the Detroit zone. Petty's off having a shaky start and he's on the puck again. Can't handle it. Ricci takes a hit. Draper, number 33, got it ahead. Johnson is knocked down and the first penalty is going to be called. Against Colorado. Johnson. Uh, Detroit going through center was nailed. And the first penalty. Curtis Lasession is going to get the penalty for hooking Johnson and twisting him around and knocking him to his feet in the center zone. And there it is right there. As you can see, the puck is nowhere near Johnson. So the Red Wings get a chance in the power play. They've dressed seven defensemen tonight. Paul Coffey was iffy all day, as Ron McLean told you in the opening. Bowman taking no chances there. That means 11 forwards. He'll rely heavily on the nine that are going the best. Just before the game, an un, not an uncommon little practice by players. They're passing a little smelling salts around to clean their head. Iserman is in charge, as usual. This was taken during the national anthem. I want that head crystal clear tonight. Well, the first power play of game five is coming up. Detroit, Iserman on the draw. Can't win it cleanly, and Colorado will send them back. Fedorov, Iserman, Larionov, Lidstrom, they're turning. Cicerelli is out there also. From center, it's shot in by Fedorov. Lucerov shot it away. A little bit too high. And over the boards at the Colorado bench. And the faceoff will come inside the line. Mark Crawford sees the chance to complete the execution tonight of the Red Wings. He hasn't changed his defense core since game one. Why should he? It's an underrated crew if we've ever seen one. He always makes a change or two among his forwards. And here are see Simon in for the first time in this series tonight. Detroit's power play in the series still under 20 percent at 19. Four for 21. They'd like to climb up that ladder a little bit right here. They get a chance. Marianov and Fedorov going in. Fedorov takes it back to the net. Works his way to the corner to the line and goes. Lindstrom shot. Block in front. Big rebound, and Lidstrom stops it at the blue line. Into Iserman. Iserman looking cross ice. Stops in there, throws it to the side of the net, and gets in front himself. Larionov working it outside. Fake the shot, and hit a skate. Yell will clear it down the ice for Colorado. Lidstrom takes it at center. In it goes. Iserman grabbed it back. Shot. Blocked by Wall. Good. Give and go, though, back to Lidstrom, who has the big shot, and Waugh saw it. And the wars started already between Cicerelli and Patrick Waugh. And, of course, Cicerelli's trying to make sure that Patrick can't see all the shots. He sees this one clearly from the top of the circle and makes the save, and there goes Cicerelli to the net to see if there's a piece of garbage hanging around. But here he is. We've seen this against every opponent. Well, it makes no difference to Dino. That's where he's going. And if you want to get him out of there, you've got to try all kinds of tricks. 40 seconds left to the penalty. Face off again inside the Colorado line. It comes back to Coffey. First turn for Coffey. Pass along the blue line and work it back to Coffey. Doesn't handle it cleanly, but he took the shot in front. What a chance for the Red Wings. Kozlov was upended trying to get the shot by Waugh. Colorado now moving on at 20 seconds left in the penalty. Coffey gets set. Shot it into the corner. Comes back to Kozlov. Kozlov lost it. Coffey couldn't hold it inside the line. Konstantinov worked it back in. Five 
seconds left on the power play. No score. First period just underway. We played four minutes. Center ice. Colorado now. Shot in there. Glove by Osgood. You have to watch Sackett. He gives you no warning at all. Coming in and that beautiful wrist shot. Gloved by Osgood. Introducing the new Pepsi Stuff Catalog. Now, the more Pepsi you drink, the more great stuff you're going to get. Sure beats the bus. <laughs> Kozlov, number 13, is going to get a great opportunity to score his first goal of this series, but big UA crew with that long stick to flex the puck out of harm. And Konstantinov pays a visit to the enemy here. You wouldn't want to be in there, and who's throwing him in? Joe Sackick is depositing the truculent Vladimir Konstantinov into the bench. Now Crawford's holding the player back so he can get out without being impaired or there'll be a penalty. Face off now to the left of Chris Osgood. No score, nearing the five minute mark. Opening period. And Colorado trying to advance to the final tonight. Well, one of the plans that you can bet Mark Crawford has is the first 10 or 12 minutes. Let's be even or better. Don't give them a chance to get into this game and get the crowd really behind them. Lemieux trying to get on track to get a shot, but he was covered quickly. Nicholas Lindstrom standing back with the net for Detroit. Ramsey. And a lift to high one. Bounces it down over the line. That might be offside. But Colorado plays it, so the play will continue. And up comes Kamensky, trying to split the defense. Couldn't do it. Taylor back out for Detroit. Fanned on it. The giveaway in the center ice area. Claude Lemieux takes it. Ramsey thought he had him lined up, but Lemieux sidestepped him. Detroit changing. Lemieux. Shot it up the center. Larry Onoff dropped it back. Bergevin had a tough time handling it in front of the net. Now McCarty for the Red Wings to center. Covered, so he shoots it up. Iserman going in. The backhander is stopped on the short side. Wall on the post. Colorado Avalanche get it up to center ice. Young picked the shot, rolled it in. Coffee got it out quickly. Eiserman coming up on the play. Eiserman takes the pass, turns back, shoots it back to the net. Larry Onov went in there with him. All the way back to the line. Coffey now winds up. Couldn't get the shot too far. Hit Young. He's out for Colorado. Has to shoot it in as he's checked in center ice by Perzovan. No score, first period. Coming up to six minutes, and Coffey lifting a long one in. Was waved off. Avalanche move on it. Keen put it over to an open wing. That's knocked down by Fed. He saw it. Huey Krupp backhands it in there. Konstantinov takes over. For Detroit, turning away from one check. He has to go to Fed. He saw it. He gave it away again. That's three times in this first period. Big Fed. He saw it. Threw it away. Lively. Federal coming in. Shoots. Hit wall. Shook him up a little bit. Bullet shot up high. Wall, he'll stop it with anything. Colorado out. They clear it away as they want to make changes. End to win now. This is Fetty Solve again. He's had a shaky start. This time a soft pass ahead. Red Wings do not get anywhere against Forsberg. In for checking. Now they get it out. 
The Speedy Draper is away. Coming in. The pass. Draper. Open side, but he hit the side of the net with that great chance. Lemieux right foot one down the ice. Troy will be back to pick it up, and that's an icing call against Colorado. The Troy have had their chances, but it's still scoreless. Well, some good back checking on that last dangerous rush by Draper by 22 Claude Lemieux. And he helps his defenseman Ozil Lynch out right here. Does a real good job of getting Johnson out of the way. And then Draper, he just couldn't quite get the puck away in a hurry as his shot was deflected by Ozil Lynch. Great chance for Draper, but it's still no score. Two seconds short of the seven minute mark in the first period. From the faceoff in the Colorado zone, Lindstrom pounds it in back for the net. The Red Wings are in to dig it out first. Foot doing his job. Draper around the net, has to circle it a second time. Finally loses it. Avalanche get it out over the line to center ice. Claude Lemieux, left wing pass. Up to Johnson, shoots it in. Didn't see the hit coming from Lemieux. And here he is, 22, with the puck. He got it to center, Detroit Kings. Coming close to touching it, going off was Johnson. He stepped away from it, though. Red Wings moving up. McCarty tries to stick handle in. Can't do that. Avalanche get it ahead. They are very patient in the early going of this game. If they get with it, they'll go on to the Stanley Cup Championship. Detroit trying to stay alive, and that's an icing call against the Red Wings. They're down three games to one. Win your own plane to Atlanta this summer. A private Air Canada jet. For you and 39 of your friends. For a day long party in Atlanta. The Go Canada Go contest. Fly Air Canada now to June 16th and look for entry forms in your newspaper. Go Canada Go with Air Canada. People today seem to have a lot more trouble relaxing than they used to. So, Mom and I have a home hardware prescription. If a little stress is a problem, take two of these after lunch. For a more severe case, you may need a higher dosage. In extreme cases, radical treatment may be called for. And you also need to eat well. Great price, friendly advice at Home Hardware. With 900 clinics and neighborhoods all across Canada. Oh, well, coffee has two goals in this series. The Detroit defensemen have five, and the Detroit forwards have five. Goals four has been the biggest problem for the Red Wings. Only ten in four games, only four at five on five. And this goal famine is killing the Red Wings. Primo, Fedorov, Kozlov, and Stevie Y goalless in this series. Talk to Scotty Bowman before the game tonight. And you know, he was as cool as if this were the first game in the series. Now they're making uh, they're making Iserman cover up his elbow pad, so Colorado must have complained about it. Benarov on the draw wins it cleanly, and Coffee slice one back to the net. Troy trying to organize against this checking Colorado team. It's flipped in wide of Patrick Waugh. But here's Kozlov to pick it up in the corner. Coffee waiting back at the point, but he can't get it back to him. Simon coming back out to center ice, lost it in Kozlov, looking for a little room, and he finds it. Got it in over the line to Fedorov, and Fedorov made a good move. Trying to flip it back to the line. It comes out, and Coffee was waiting there. Up for Detroit. Long shot by Brown, blocked by Wall. Brown hopped on it again. Hangs onto it. Gives it to Kozlov. In the corner, he's twisting and turning to get away from a hit. Pass went out in front, and Brown just missed it. Just out from the crease to the right of Wall. Vensky can't get too far. Fentisov from center. 
Shoots it in wide of the net. It's over the glass into the crowd at the far side. And they call the play. Canadian Tire has great prices on everything you need. Plus, earn Canadian Tire money with every cash purchase of merchandise. Canadian Tire. Everyday low prices made better. In our first intermission, of course, Don Cherry in the coach's corner. We are nearing the halfway mark of the first period. Well, big Chris Simon playing his first game of this series. He's had a leg injury. So this is one of those hunch moves, I think, by Mark Crawford. You can make hunches when you're up 3-1. And he is up 3-1. Detroit fighting for their lives tonight. McCarty shot, tipped in front of the net. No damage. Cleared right away, out over the line. By Lafave. Again near center. Group falling, gave it to Young. Young moving up, hooked the shot. Osgood the save. Big rebound was set up by the Red Wings cover in the end. Get it off the boards, but not out. Apparently, it did come out over the line an inch or two, and when Keane slapped it back in, that caused the offside. Well, Igor Larionov, I thought, played a little bit better in the last two games than he did in the first two. But it's heavy traffic Colorado Avalanche put up. He's not a big guy. And as a result, with the diminished ice space out there, he's always seemed to have someone get a stick or a hook on him. I'd like to play the wing with this guy, though. If you could get yourself in the clear, he'd get you the puck. 9.43. The period one. Looking for the first goal of the game. And usually in these series, in the playoffs, the first goal turns out to be huge. It sure does. Colorado 7-2 and when they score first in these playoffs. Detroit 8-2. and two. And in the 96 playoffs, when you look at all the games, if you score first, 54 times you've won and only 22 times you've lost in these 96 playoffs. Detroit's Ramsey. Graper got going. Didn't see the relay come up for him. Stolen at the line, the point carried in, but they were offside. Draper was a little late getting back out. Play stopped again. Well, we talked about some of the Detroit players that seem to be in a bit of a slump here, but that's also true for the Colorado Avalanche. Kamensky, who had 18 points in the first two rounds, is pointless and a minus two in this round. And he had 38 goals and 85 assists for 85 points during the season. So he's in a slump. Five three of the shots in favor of the Red Wings. Taylor moving it up. The crowd trying to get the wings a fire here and get that first goal. They're offside again on that rush. See, they've got the pom-poms out again, Bob. They mystified you in round two. They even had him in Colorado. You gotta get that franchise. <laughs> well, the Red Wing fans are worried but not unenthused because they're trying to get this team to force another game and perhaps see the seven. Fedorov's wearing different skates tonight. We'll show you a little later. He's got the black babies on instead of the white. One goal with points. 17 assists. 9.30 left to the period. And no score here in period one. Bergevin. Lifting the puck across center. Eiserman couldn't play it. Fave shot it on the boards and Coffey stopped it there. Rolled it into the corner. Mariana dropped it back, but Coffey had left that spot. It was a blind pass by Mariana. Backs up through a quick pass up through the middle to Lariano. Nothing blind about that one. That was right on the take from Coffey. But it's Colorado shooting it back in. Osgood out of the net. He 
sees the change coming by Detroit. And a quick shot in there. Big rebound. Osgood Sharp. He stopped the one and then lost the rebound, but got the stick down and hooked it away. Fedorov is coming in. Fedorov trying to blast his way through. The Avalanche are all back. Petisov shoots. That's blocked. He kept it in, though. Young blocked the first shot. Centering pass. Race up. They score. Red Wings kept the first goal. Oslov. Tremendous explosion after that goal, and they're still screaming one to nothing Detroit. Well, Kozlov comes in from the left side and bats the puck out of the air on the rebound past Patrick Waugh. Here's another look at it. Here's the real good chance. The puck's up in the air, and Kozlov, about 21 inches high, hits it with a stick and puts the Red Wings ahead. And Kozlov, who's been one of those players that hasn't produced in this series, scores first in this game. Kozlov's fifth of the playoffs. Federov and Brown drawing the assists. 11.35 the time. Detroit one. Colorado nothing. Here it is again. Go to the net without the puck. You're often rewarded. 13-1. one nothing Red Wings. Patrick Waugh made the initial stop, but he was getting up when the second shot went to his legs. Vyacheslav Kozlov giving Detroit a 1 0 lead. Well, that has to be a good feeling for the Red Wings in a do or die game. They get on the board first. Well, statistics tell you that for them and many teams in the playoffs, it is one of the keys to success. Avalanche, Forsberg, backhands a weak one in along the boards. Another net, Osgood. Lemieux is up there hitting his man. Gusarov on the boards, can't keep it in. The Red Wings nearly get it out. A great play by Lemieux. And a fine save by Chris Osgood. Lemieux set up Forsberg. And everybody thought the game would be tied, except Chris Osgood. What a great save. Still 1 0 Detroit. make this beauty look its best, I use Armor All Protectant on the vinyl and rubber. And for the paint, now there's Armor Plate Paint Protectant. It shines, protects, and really makes those colors pop. New Armor Plate. It's like Armor All for your paint. Nobody knows protection like a quarterback. That's why I like Armor All Protectant. Test-proof Armor All blocks up to four times more of the sun's damaging UV rays than the number two brand. So don't just shine your car, armor it with Armor All. Here's the 97 Escort. It's all brand new. We've got a sedan and a big wagon, too. Both have more power than they did in the past, with new four-door styling that's sure to last. Each have dual airbags if danger comes knocking, and new premium speakers to keep you rocking. Plenty of room and handsome good looks. The decision is easy. There's just one hook. With two cars this great, you'll have to think twice, for both sedan and wagon are exactly the same price. Well, a weak clearing play, a great scoring chance. Osgood, a terrific save. McCarty and Ramsey collide right here, and the puck's bumped back in by Kamensky in the two-on-one. What a beautiful pass by Lemieux, but the stop of the night by Osgood. Was it ever. We played just 12 minutes of the first period, but that was a Stanley Cup playoff save by Osgood. It's such an important game. And his team just scoring to take a 1-0 lead. And they still lead by that margin. 
Great goaltending. The point. Bump by Forsberg. He got it to Kamensky. Lemieux is right behind him. Kamensky spun around, and the Red Wings pick it up and get out. Down they go. Larionov is trailing the play and getting in front. The pass comes back to the line. Great six goal. joint is rocking. I guess so. That was a terrific play from their own blue line. Konstantinov just missed, and then they cashed in. They go way back into the Detroit zone. What a lovely play. 20. Lapointe made to get it right here to Larionov. And Larionov, or Eiserman, showing that great speed. Here's the shot you're talking about. And the guy that started the play and got the puck to Larionov. Larry on offense to play right here. Detroit two. Colorado nothing. Konstantinov had that great chance, and the shot was a foot wide. And as Larry just mentioned, Larry on off started the play. Picked it up and concluded the play. Number eight, Igor Lariano. There's a hostage situation on Alcatraz. You refuse to. So the Red Wings have taken a 2 0 lead on Colorado. A penalty being called against Colorado now. The moment they touch the puck, it's a shot from the line. Ross stopped that. And now the play is called. And the Red Wings are going to go on the power play again. Larionov scored the second goal from Iserman and Konstantinov at 12.39. Harry, two goals in a minute and four seconds. Well, Colorado losing their poise a little bit here, and I'm sure Mark Crawford's going to remind his players we can't be giving any bonus power plays to Detroit. Simon nearly got a penalty, and then finally Deadmarsh does for Sassi. Now Simon's given it to the verbally to the Detroit bench. And in the middle of the screen, you're going to see the slash right there. And it wasn't much of a slash if that was it. Kerry Fraser puts the rookie Adam Deadmarsh in the box, and the Wings got a chance with 6.44 to go to make it 3 0. And they win the faceoff. Lindstrom's pass. Federoff panning on the shot. Cicerelli will dig it out for him again. Federoff and Lindstrom at the line. Lindstrom to Federoff. Little pass ahead. And whip it around one more time. Lindstrom. Went ahead to Eiserman without the hit here to Lindstrom. Federoff's shot. It'll be cleared by Yell all the way down the ice. Away coming back, leading two to nothing. Extra man, Fedorov. Head fake didn't work. Set up by Sackick. Forsberg had to shoot it from a sharp angle. Forsberg again from Joe Sackick. Till some time, got it back to the line. Sackick in there. Oh, Osgood robbed Sackick. But came right into him. Now Cicerelli and Coffey. Coffey had to quickly backhand it up into the corner. Eiserman got it loose. Coffey again at the point. Pass goes in. Out to Coffey. Shot on goal. Turned away. Cicerelli and Eiserman falling. Forsberg stopped by Cicerelli. Fifty saw bumped by Zappic. Out front. Coffey keeps it in. Weak shot though. It's cleared by the Avalanche. Osgood, very comfortable with the way he's come to play tonight now as the way out of the net to start the Red Wings up again. And Coffey strides across center. Dumped it in. Round the net it goes out to Kozlov and Johnson. Into Cicerelli. Cicerelli working it loose. Back to Fetty Song. Pass goes over to the boards. Side of the net. They work it in back of the goal. 
avalanche will clear it down the ice. Clem, two strides, decides to go all the way with it. Up across center, and they go in. Then on the shot, and a second chance, and shot it back to the goal. Red Wings try to move it out, but they don't. Ed Marsh had a great chance. Now the avalanche are changing. Ozilich stopping at the line. Red Wings lots of time to come back to pick it up. And away they go. Leading two to nothing. Four ten left in the period. It's centered. Ross stopped it. Taylor got it in front again. A point is stopped. And Raper is on it. Turning back. Raper shoots one. Ross saw it all the way. It missed the net. To his left. Heavy hitting inside the line. Decision drives one from outside the blue line. Puck loose. Avalanche were changing. A lot of room out there. Forsberg rolled it inside. Goes back to the goal. Nancy for Detroit. Rink wide pass. Knight down the ice by Draper. Johnson for checking. The crowd is happy with a start. The Red Wings have to this game. A loss and their season is over. Young turning it back for Colorado. On with the brakes and the shot wiped away by Osgood. Step. The wings are looking good to this stage. Three minutes left in the first period. Bergevin up on the boards. Doug Brown and he got the puck out. Recruit lifting a long one in wide of the net. Osgood leaving it at the side of the goal. Johnson to center. Cardi is coming up hard. It'll be Gusarov though pulling away from him. Gusarov coming out of his own zone, stick handling away with it. Laid it up over the line. They're offside on that rush. 239 left in the period. The customer protection plan is unique to Cal Tire. Well, the worst little rumor floating around Joe Lewis that Mike Vernon might start this game but Osgood did he made a terrific stop right here as Forsberg gets in all alone on him and then the most dangerous player in the playoffs Joe Sackey gets it right in front and Osgood robs him blind after Sackey was the benefactor of a terrible turnover by the Red Wings nine saves so far in the first period by Chris Osgood the Red Wings have scored twice on their 10 shots. Two to nothing, Detroit with 2.25 left in the opening period. Mariano looking for it, then escapes, get a stick on it. Cleared out, and he's off, got it ahead to Weiserman, he stopped. And Ozil Lynch comes in. He lost it against Fenty Sov, and around the net it goes. McCurdy from the corner, right in front of his own goal. Had to hurry the pass in. It's tipped out over the line to center by Eicherman down the right side. That angle for me had to keep going around the net. Eicherman comes in to help. Avalanche will clear it out. Under two minutes left in the opening period. Goals by Kozlov and Lariano. 104 apart. Better off shot. That's deflected and away wide of the net. But he gets it again. Careful with that quick shot from Federal. Lidstrom backhands it in there for Brown and hopped away from him. And Gusarov takes it for Colorado. Pulled everybody with a double twist back to the net. And then it's cleared right in on the net. Osgood scooped it up. Ramsey the back to Brown. Nobody opens, so he shoots at the center right. Troop and Gusarov headed ahead. Huck loose at center with a minute left in the first period. Kozlov shoots it in. And Lefebvre takes over. With Huey Krug. will have to go back and do it again. No Sackett trying to figure out how to get this clearing play to work. Shot at the center. And he played it in. It got in front of the net but was shot back out to center. Lefebvre again. Backing up. Go down, hoping Sackett would find it, but it was Coffee who knocked it down. And the Red Wings clear it. 
25 seconds remaining in the period. Huey Coop back. Up for Young. And to knock it down. It got high. Draper made a good move, but he couldn't get in on the fade. Played the puck and then cleared it. Ten seconds left in the period. The Troy deep in their own zone. And then they'll shoot it out. Knock it in from center. And Bergevin takes it back in his own zone. As the horn goes to end the first period. The shots by Detroit 11. And by the Colorado Avalanche 9. A word or two before they decide that this period, in fact, has come to a close. Well, Simon has played about three shifts, and every shift he's had a very active and colorful conversation with one Red Wing, this time Bergevin and McCarty. I'm sure Mark Crawford likes his energy, but can't have him taken any unnecessary penalties. The Wings had as good a first period as they've had in this series. Yes, they did. They score two goals in a minute and four seconds. Don Cherry is standing by in the coach's corner. Kozlov and Larionov have scored the goals. 2-0. Detroit leads it. When it comes to broadly... Kozlov and Larionov and Fedorov and his old Graf skates. 2-0 Detroit at the end of 20 minutes. Here's the way it works. I've had it many times. You're up 3-1. You go in the dresser. You say, come on, guys. One more win. They're done. Get up. Get up. And you don't get up. And I, that's why Jake and I said Detroit's going to win. Because when you're desperate like that, Scotty didn't have to say anything. They're up. The little bit that they're up. And the little bit that they come down, that's the difference right now. You Different game in Colorado. I told you what was going to happen before the game. Yeah, it used to be insurmountable 3-1 leads, and uh, Detroit's overcome them twice. Both times, great goaltending. Glenn Hanlon against Toronto, Tim Shevelday against Minnesota, and tonight. If I, if I was uh, Crawford and I was the guys in the avalanche, I'd be worried because they kinda, they've kind of they got that roar back again, going back. They've got nothing to lose. Guys, we got nothing to lose. It's summertime, and that's exactly what's happened. And Primo in reserve, and you say it's a groin, and I say he's swell. Uh, but he'll be good when they get back. Listen, Joe yep. Sackick had a couple of great chances uh, again in the first period. Absolutely. He's been the star of the Hit playoffs. the post. Yeah, that was the post. Hit the post. Now, here's what happened here. Peter McNabb was telling me, who's their announcer out there, played for me, 40-goal scorer, one of the 20 uh, we had. Now, here's what he said. Sackick was a guy, and I always remembered in junior and the whole deal, what would happen is guy hit him, he'd fall down. Guy hit him, you know, he was a quiet guy. All of a sudden, Merzon hit him for Vancouver, really filled him in. He said, got up. Peter said, that's it. I'm not taking it anymore. Watch this hit coming up right now. Go ahead, Mark. Roll it right now. Watch this. That's beauty. He cuts in the center as usual. Boom. Now, he's laying there, and he could almost see. Peter said, this is, I think we're going to see it again in slow motion. Made a lovely pass of goal. But watch it again. Looking back, kids. Never do that. <laughs> Looking for that drop pass. But what happened is you'll see after he actually ran at Merzon, and I couldn't believe it that he did it because he's a giant. But he said, that's it. I mean, he did kind of skate it away. But before that, he wouldn't have even tried it. And they tell me that he really gave it to him. About a game later, he almost took his head off. And he said, from that day on, he's been an aggressive guy, not only on the ice, but in the dressing room. Well, he took one hit. It's only his 29th Stanley Cup playoff game. People forget that. Uh, Patrick Roy, conversely, is playing in about his millionth yeah. tonight. And uh, not his fault on those two. I saw a funny thing uh, this morning. I couldn't believe it because Cheevers did the same thing. It was unbelievable. He was up against the boards, not in the net. Just before he went off for the morning skate, he got out on his knees, and he had a guy that he trusts with the puck wrist shots, and he took shots, first of all, 10 here, 10 here, and 10, he caught them like that, and he went off fast. The very same thing, we'll try to get it some morning, the very same thing Cheevers used to do. Bing, 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 bing. Remember, goaltenders, get ready like that. Basic stuff. Now, we got a little tip for you coming up. Now, I, I, let me explain it to you because it's kind of fast. He's got the puck in front of him, Pat Roy. It's in front of him right there. He's got to reach down like that. When you've got to reach down like that, you have the whole thing exposed there. He drops the stick and covers it up with his blocker hand. Watch, kids. This is what he does, the best goaltender in hockey. Watch this. Now, watch it comes in front. It's pretty uh, scary here. Puts it down. Takes his head. You see what he did there, kids? Didn't reach over. You see the guy over at the other side? It looked like uh, Larry Onoff waiting there. If it squirts over, it's in the net. Now watch him get it. He, he drops his stick. 
There he does it. See that he picks up, looks at the referee. And I know you're going to say Hasek does the same thing. Yes, he does do the same bit thing, but not like Pat Roy. Well, that was a great play by him. There's some concern about throwing the stick when Hasek does it because he's really quick. Well, he does it anyhow. But remember, kids, when you reach over like this, now remember, goalies, when you reach over like that to do it, think about Larry Onoff's there. If it squirts over, he's dead meat. Now, if he stands like this and does it, he's still got a chance. What about the danger of getting your fingers? Uh, that don't matter. He just puts it on like that. Picks Listen, it up we like only that. have about two in a bit, and I'd love to get to Whitey Smith, your buddy from Rochester. But before we do that, uh, you had a great clip about a giveaway by Valerie Kamensky. Yeah, we've got to hurry this one up. Kids, never throw the puck out blind out in the front. Watch what happens here. Watch what happened. How many times have I told you never throw it blind up the middle? Absolutely ridiculous, and they get it. Watch, watch, it gets it and just fires it up the middle like that. Unbelievable. Watch what happens after this. Now I want to talk about my friend Whitey Smith. Watch what happens. He's from Rochester, New York. He's one of my dearest friends. This is Memorial Day for the United States. We got to honor their dead. They're the ones that bail us out. And that Second World War, they're pretty good. This is all from a giveaway coming here. And we bless them all. And you know How'd what? How'd you meet Whitey Smith? Whitey Smith, he was my, uh, how much time we got? We got about a minute. Hey, I he know was my the postcards all yeah, the time. Yeah, he, he's about 70 some now. You can't see it, he's down in Rochester. But he arose from a buck private to captain in combat. He's three months. So that you guys in the Army know what that means. And he's my dear friend. He's a supervisor. And uh, uh, I, I love it down in the States here. If a guy comes over from the old country, you see him the next day, they say, what are you? Yeah, in Canada, they say, well, I'm, you know, so-and-so, I'm from the old country. Not down here. They're here one day, they're American. And that's the way we should be in Canada. You come to Canada, you're Canadian. Not whatever, it's Lois, Sobobia, stickers no, on, loved it. Wait a minute. They're going great, but I love multicultural. Just a minute. Yeah, you do. You, this guy would. You come to Canada, you're Canadian. I love the States. They say you, 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 want, you love where you come from so much. Here's five dollars. Could take a couple back with you. And the states say you love the states or you leave it. And that's what I say about Canada. Thanks, states, for being with us on your war memorial day. And Whitey Smith, you're the best. Can't top that. Usually war words, but we'll leave it at a word about war. On Molson Hockey Night in Canada in the Coach's Corner on CBC. Coach's Corner on CBC. Brought to you by Green Cross. First aid for lawns and gardens. The job. Lewis Arena in Detroit, where the Red Wings have taken a 2-0 lead on Colorado. The scoring in a minute and four seconds. Kozlov, his fifth of the playoffs. Fedorov and Brown assisting. Then Larionov, his sixth from Iserman and Konstantinov. Shots in the period were 11 to 9 in favor of the Red Hot Red Wings. Two to nothing. Second period underway. Avalanche set back on their heels a bit by the high flying wings to start this hockey game. Well, Ron McLean caught up with assistant coach Joel Quinville and his thoughts of the first. Well, I thought we started the first five or ten minutes pretty well, but once they got that first goal, which seems to be so crucial in this series, they seemed to get some momentum off it. We had an opportunity right next shift with Peter to tie it, but uh, we dug ourselves a big hole here, but I think we just got to be patient. We got to get the puck in deep and uh, turn it over and forecheck and maybe create the one goal and then uh, get back in the hockey game. Fenisov hurt himself on that icing. He won the race, but then Mike Ricci slid into him and he's favored his leg, but appears to be all right. Face off at the Colorado zone. A shot from the line coming up from Fenisov, but he waited too long. And he was in too far to put it on the net. Avalanche get it out. Penalty coming up. McCarty dumped his man. Stefaniel. And the penalty is being called. Maybe Konstantinov. Yeah, he's gone. Konstantinov got caught standing still and trapped and he grabbed Stefaniel from behind and hauled him down and took the penalty. Carney was the player who grabbed the puck as Konstantinov took his man. A holding penalty. Well this gives Colorado a chance to get back in the game. They need the next goal. And their power play needs some improvement. Three for 18 in the series. That's just a little over 16%. They come up on the attack. Lemieux trying to shot. And 
there was Osgood in perfect position to take that one. He didn't have to move. Now Claude Lemieux, of course, is hated by the fans. The Red Wing coach isn't too fond of him. Kozlov doesn't like him a lot. This is a perfect setup for Lemieux. This werewolf is back. And we'll hear a little bit more about 22 before the game ends. I thought he was pretty peaceful for a guy coming off suspension in the first period. From the faceoff, Avalanche win it. Joe Sacknick is about to risk one. Backed off from it. That hands it to the far corner. Ramsey missed it. Kamensky in on the boards. Ian Forsberg. And it's fired to the line and out down the ice. Hopped away from Ozilich. Detroit will change the penalty killers as Ozilich starts back out. Sacknick to his right. He'll carry the puck to center, though, and shoot it in. Osgood out of the net quickly to play it for Coffey. And Coffey finds the opening to get it to the line. It's uh, tipped down the ice by Eiserman. Forsberg back up. Quick ahead from Bergevin. And Detroit will clear it away again. Under a minute left in the penalty. 50 seconds picked off by Eiserman, but offside is called. Larry Onoff didn't see the play develop. He was stopped over there at the far side, away inside the line, and was just taking his time getting to the bench. He had no idea that Eiserman had intercepted the pass and was coming in pretty quickly on a one-on-one -on -one rush where he was going a lot faster than the defenseman was. And there's Steve right beside Larry Onoff saying, he didn't see me. He said, no. And it was too bad because uh, Eiserman had a little something going on the rush. Colorado one for four in the power play in the last game at Denver. But they've only had a total of nine shots and 18. Here's a chance. And Chris Osgood stopped him with a loose puck. And it's cleared away. The net is off the moorings. And they have to stop the play. But what a glorious opportunity swept away. Well, a turnover in the neutral zone by the Red Wings here with 37 seconds left to go and the penalty to Konstantinov nearly cost them a goal. Osgood came up big time again and it looked like the puck was uh, in no man's land in center ice. And here it is right here. Mike Ramsey loses it trying to get it down. It hits the shaft of the stick and it's a breakaway. One chance there. There's another one by Young. And then everyone ends up in the net, and the puck doesn't as Lindstrom throws it. And here's the end of it right here. So the Red Wings get away with a careless giveaway by Mike Ramsey, a good initial stop by Osgood. And because the Colorado player knocked the net off right there, the faceoff will come outside the zone. And Ozil Lynch had some difficulty controlling it. Now Scott Young has to go to Ozil Lynch, close quarters. They get it up to center, and Sackick will bring it over the line. Joe Sackick for Colorado centered it. Score! Osgood had stopped it and was looking for it. And to find it, he had to look back over his shoulder because it's in the net. And a power play goal gets the Avalanche back in the game before Detroit could run away with it. Well, Chris Osgood, who's played so well in this game, really let a careless rebound go on what looked to be a harmless shot. And before anybody could recover, here's Joe Sackett getting outside the Red Wing player. There's the rebound now. And before he could recover, and before Coffey could tie him up, Mike Ricci put it in. Osgood's way back in the net. And he knows, Osgood knows that that was a debatable stop he made on an easy shot by Sackick, but Ricci goes to the net. And the Avalanche know that that was a big goal to score early in the second period because Detroit was showing signs of taking over this game. A big game for them. A loss and their year is done. Ricci's third of the playoffs. Joe Sackick and Adam Detmarsh getting assists. 2-10 the time. It is now Detroit Two, Colorado one. Up goes Simon. He's feeling better. He was out of the lineup, nursing a sore ankle. Inserted tonight. And Fetisov could have played it, so icing is waved off. 
And he has to hustle back, and Simon is right behind him. Bet he solved. All confidence comes out of his own zone, getting away from Keane. And the Red Wings move it in. Ariano dropped it back. Pretty tough going in the shot. Off the outside of the post from Eiserman. He had some open net to shoot at. Bet he saw going down and a great hip check. Up ends his man at center. Konstantinov is in. Hardy failed to pick up the pass and Forsberg knocked it away. Now it begins to open up a bit. Here in the second period, it's shot in by the Avalanche. They show some moxie now, getting that goal from Ricci at 2-10. We are nearing the four-minute mark of the second. Colorado on the puck in there, around the net. Loose puck in front of the goal, and Lemieux will take it back to the line to Ozzelin. Back into Lemieux, the high pass he couldn't knock down. It's loose at the side of the goal, and the Red Wings come out with it. Getting away to center ice. Johnson wrapped it at the line and went in to make the play in front. He got it back again. First pass deflected to him. A point hooked it back of the goal. Johnson going in after Gusarov. Shot back in to Johnson. Gusarov can't find it. Johnson does. Centers up right in front of the net. And Waugh's down and hit his right pad. And he doesn't move and holds the puck with the Red Wings pressing him. Summer sounds good, but it could sound even better. Oh yeah, the Coors Light talking cat and Capitan. You could win the ultimate electronic playroom. A Bang & Olufsen audio system, a Sony TV, a compact Rosario, a cool phone and a Walkman. Thousands of prizes to be won. Look for specially marked cases or for entry without product purchase. Call 1-800-225-8255. Must be of legal drinking age. So listen up this summer. The Coors Light talking cat and Capitan sound. Good. I hear you. If you were building the perfect sedan, how would you do it? Well, you'd start with the luxuries you could get, like a Bose audio system with six individually tuned speakers and a keyless remote entry. Install a powerful 190 horsepower V6 engine. Then as a finishing touch, you'd put it on Car and Driver's 10 best list. The Nissan Maxima, the perfect sedan. back at Joe Lewis. It's a 2-1 hockey game. Great opportunity here by the Red Wings to get up twice. Another two goal as Iserman roared it off the right goal post. And here's a Fetisov hit on Keane. Keane's looking back for the puck. And when he gets it, Fetisov comes in with a hip check. They always look more spectacular than the ones that are shoulder to chest. Colorado winning the faceoff in their own zone. They're within a goal of the Red Wings now with that big goal by Ricci. Red Wings for attacking goal. Better off shot, deflected over the net. And it's lifted over the glass by Sylvain Lefebvre. That stops the play. Well, I don't think Scotty Bowman is going to allow his team or his thoughts to be put off too much by the early goal by Colorado. He knows this is a good hockey team. He knows he has the team has to play three periods to win it. A famous Winston Churchill quote seems appropriate for the current dilemma of the Red Wings. And Winston once said, do not let us speak of darker days. Let us speak rather of sterner days. Red Wings winning the draw. It's tipped in front
and the wings pounce on a mistake by the Avalanche to get up 3-1. 4-18 the time of that goal by Federal Coffee, the only assist, and they get their two-goal lead back again. Pretty smart play by Coffee. Avalanche go in offside on that rush. Coffee has always been sharp at the point throwing the puck at the net. He's been doing that all his career, and this time it was perfectly executed. Harry, he was not trying to score. He saw Taylor and one or two players in front, and Fedorov tipped it. Absolutely. Look at him right here. That's more of a pass than a shot, and it's a good idea, especially if you're playing against a team like Colorado who blocks a lot of point shots. And there's Scotty Bowman, who's going to give us... <laughs> He, he doesn't even smile when they score. Get that ice going, Scotty. It's hard to laugh, though, when you're down three games to one, I'll tell you that. We are coming up to the five-minute mark of the second period. Colorado coming back after him. High shot from the blue line. Oh, way too high to do any damage. Decision makes a good play to break it up. Kaminsky's pass will be deflected. Over the glass at the far side, and that negates any attack there. And now we have Mr. Thierry, who has a special guest for us. Well, Bob, here we are. They got you behind the penalty box. Can you believe it? Well, it's kind of fitting, I guess, uh, me, me being here. <laughs> Boy, you had it. This is my first time ever going in the crowd. You were the most popular guy here. Chicago, a few breaks, you guys could have made it. Definitely, I, I, you know, I think uh, we had three overtimes and it, they could have went either way and could be us here tonight. Well, I tell you, boy, you bounce back. Everybody's proud of you. We all love you and you look like a million bucks. Back to you, Bob. Okay, Don. <laughs> two and guys, Bob. Two guys that have spent a lifetime in those seats, one row ahead. Well, it's Detroit leading Colorado by two goals. Two in the first, another now. Here in the second. After Ricci had scored for Colorado to give them a life. Well, Mike Ricci extends his four-game point streak to five. One goal, five assists for six points. And he has really come to life offensively. And it's getting more ice time with better offensive players. But the Colorado Avalanche had a life for about two minutes or three minutes. Just before, just after they scored, but the air could be out of the balloon now. Oh, we got Don Cherry as a roving reporter now. Here at the Joe Lewis. A visit with Bob Hobart. The view stepped in over the line, set one up behind him. The Red Wings were back covering Larry on off, broke it up. McCarney fired it back deep in his own zone. Mariano, cross ice pass. Grant by Lidstrom and he's away to center. Up to the Colorado line and made the move at the line. Offside. Now you saw it down Cherry right down behind the first row behind the penalty box talking to big Bob Probert. And when he left, it looks like King Tut returning to his throne. Does it not? Fans greeting him. Want them to meet their relatives, wanting their autographs. Ah, the popularity of the old defenseman right there. Face off is just outside the Colorado line at the six minute mark of the second. Red Wings three, Avalanche one. Decision dancing to center ice, drills the shot from there. Monster to one save, low shot from center. And out for two Red Wings. Up point, brings it in, trying to drop it back. Went to his knees, still made the play and along the boards. Draper is bumped in there. But he stays on his skates. He and Yell fight for it. The point comes in to help. Pile up of players in the corner. Puck coming out to Bergevin. He's coming in, shoots. That's blocked. Red Wings on it again. They're very aggressive now. Bergevin shot into the crowd. Wall got the left pad on that. Simon 
Knocked it down, played it up the center, and Keane had to swipe it right in on the net. And Detroit back as Colorado is changing. Clear down the ice. Brown was trying to get away. He tripped up at center ice and couldn't take the pass. That's an icing call against Detroit. At the seven-minute mark of the second, it's 3-1 Red Wings. Brown was trying to turn around, stay on side, and take the pass, and he tripped all by himself. But he had an idea that Simon was out there because Mr. Simon roars Kozlov into the board. When you're down 3-1 and your team's been a little lethargic, and I think that's a, an apt description of the avalanche so far, you want to hit shift. You want to put three guys out there that are going to breathe some fresh air into the lungs of the guys that watch. That's what Crawford's trying to do with that Simon line. Sackick is back on. Kamensky parked to his left. Sackick won the draw. Kamensky had to kick it away. And Konstantinov gets out of the zone. Stays up there. Takes the pass. A little bit too far for him. Reaching for it. Kusarov just played it safely. No! Konstantinov back in his own zone. And he saw stood in front of him. Knocked it away. And he saw him again as the backup at the line. Comes to center. Three Red Wings jump on it. Coming in as Brown. Federal rolled it in there. And a penalty is being called against Colorado. Red Wings are leading by two. And when we come back, they go on the power play. We stand corrected. Mr. Fraser has called a penalty against Detroit, not against the Avalanche. Kozlov sits in the box for the cross check. A look at the left of the screen. Kozlov's trying to get to the net, and he knocks down Stefan Yell with a cross check, and that's the call. Osgood thought the penalty was on to Colorado. He was at the red line when the whistle went. Well, really, so did we, as the penalty was called a little late. Colorado was in possession. But in fact, it's against Detroit. Oh, a little careless trying to clear that one away. Got away with it. Puck is shot the center. Up they come. The Avalanche, Ozelinch, right in. He scores. Ozelinch to set up, and that's number two in the hockey game for Mike Ricci, who was going to the net hard. And Ozelinch saw it. And that's another power play goal. Colorado for Ricci, and it's 3-2, one goal game again. Konstantinov had the puck at the Red Wing blue line, and for some reason couldn't get it by the forwards. Here it is right here. I know it's bouncing. This is the end of it. It's a three-on-one, and Ricci goes to the net with his stick down, and Oza Lynch puts the pass right on it. Fedorov can't quite make it to number nine, Mike Ricci, before it goes in but the mistake was at the center zone where the puck got by the Red Wing defenseman to allow the three on one on the power play. Eight minutes, the time of the goal. Denmarsh and Ozelinch getting the assist. Second power play goal of the period by Mike Ricci. Three to two now, Detroit. So it is tightened up again here in game five around the net. Trying to set something up, but Larionov is on it. Coming up with McCarty. Larionov getting up over the line. That's broken up evening at the line by Huey Krupp. And the play is stopped. The referee has called another penalty, and we'll wait this time to make sure that it is an avalanche player. I think it is. And yes, it is. Kamensky. See ya. Well, the Red Wings with 11.39 to go on a tripping penalty against Kamensky. And here's another look at the goal. There's the giveaway right there by the Red Wing player, and that allowed the three-on-one. Ricci just went to the net with a stick down, and the pass was perfect. And the goal was a simple one. There's Ricci digging hard. Stick on the ice, stick on the ice, stick on the ice. Oh, can't beat that. So Kamensky goes to the box for tripping, and now Detroit is on the power play, leading Colorado 3-2. to two. 
And looking to open up a two-goal lead again. Cicerelli, Larry on off, Eiserman, the three attackers go in deep. Around the net, Eiserman giving chase. He won't get there in time. Adam Foote will move it off the boards and lift the high one away and down on the ice. Better off coming back for it. Lidstrom is the other power play man on the unit for Detroit. He has the puck coming out. Hitman's in the center. Broken up again just inside the line. Better off saw nobody had cleared, so he turned back. Now he has lots of room to do it. And he shoots a pass up quickly to Steve Eiserman. Wall was about to play it. Cleared off the glass and back into the center ice area. A minute gone and the penalty. No shot yet. It's from an Eiserman. Eiserman gets set. Passes one over in front and that's broken up and cleared. All the way down the ice. This is Lindstrom once more. Troy and lining up. On the power play and flying is Coffee. But he was breaking for the net on the left wing. Greg Johnson just ahead of him offside. Don't play around with high prices. Come to Canadian Tire, your summer sports headquarters, and save on a huge selection of top name sports equipment. Nothing wrong by the looks of uh, that skate by Coffey. He was flying down the right side. Konstantinov thought it was onside. Coffey really had a head of steam up, and he might have been able to get on the outside right to the net. Boy, is he flying. Play went offside. Flynn played it on the boards up as far as the Detroit line. A lead pass nearly got through to Konstantinov. As he saw, and Coffey starting back out. The pass goes in on the left side. On the net, that wings keep it in. Try to get comfortable possession. They do. Bet he saw made the play. The shot in. Tipped right on Raw. Cicerelli was close to it. Saki dumped it off the boards and got it out. Bet he saw turning. He fooled Young with that big pass. And then LePay. Ahead to Kamensky. Back up to Saki. Kamensky is catching up. Saki goes after it in there. And Cicerelli for Detroit back the other way. Lead pass hit escape. Lindstrom was the intended receiver. Now Draper was filled in for Lindstrom. Who moved up. Comes back. Little bumping in on the boards and Cicerelli is away. Made a little bit too far for Taylor, but he keeps going. Teams at full strength, and Claude Lemieux comes in. Shot deflected by Ramsey. It's into the crowd. Behind Osgood. It's a 3-2 Detroit lead. Let's compare car dealers with Canadian Tire. They have licensed trained technicians. We have licensed trained technicians. They have high-tech equipment. So do we. They have nationwide guarantees. We have nation. Closed captioning of tonight's game is provided by UAP Napa Auto Parts. We're back at the Joe Louis Arena, and tomorrow night they'll be back at hockey in the Florida Pittsburgh series. In Pittsburgh, game five, 7:30 Eastern time. Join Chris Cuthbert, John Garrett, Greg Millen, and Scott Russell as that action heats up. This one heats up, to be sure. Detroit leading Colorado by a goal. And the Avalanche on the attack. Back to the net. And out front, Oza Lynch trying to shot from a possible angle, going off on one foot. And then Osgood saw one bounce near the net, and he grabbed it. 8.42 left in the period. Red Wings lead by one in a game they must win or this season is done. They got a great chance. Mike Ramsey makes a nice play right here. Tying up the Avalanche player so he can't get a stick on it. Adam Deadmarsh could have easily tipped that in if the Wiley veteran Ramsey hadn't anticipated that play. 
Face off to the left of Chris Osgood. He's at full strength from the line. Put shot. A bullet all right, but off the net. And hit by Lemieux. He's coming in on goal. And the pass goes into a crowd. Forsberg having a rough time against Konstantinov. Forsberg gets back up. Konstantinov picked the puck away to Fetisov. He's done. Heiserman to the rescue. Out to McCarty. Can't get the puck out of the zone. Kept in by Gusarov. Now the Red Wings clear up to center, and Heiserman takes the pass. Heiserman with the brakes on center. It. And Waugh was down on one knee. Was deflected by McCarty in front. They hit him and went up into the crowd. Eiserman made a nice play as he got to the outside on that rush and waited for McCarty to go to the net. And the Red Wings are now complaining that this faceoff should be inside, that it went off Patrick Waugh's stick. Of course, this all this happened after some good heavy forechecking by Colorado, and then the Wings break away for the opportunity, and the Red Wings lose their argument about where the faceoff should be. Patty Bowman is sending. Paul Coffey over to talk to Kerry Fraser. Kerry Fraser is one of the referees who's very cooperative when you want to have a little conference. Some won't talk to you, he will. Detroit leads three to two. Eight minutes left of the second period. Law decided to move it himself. Two players tangled next to him. Federal gets it back. Kozlov shoots a high one. Rattles that one off at last. It's in a score! Brown tipped it in. are playing like there's no tomorrow. Well, Sylvain Lefebvre could not tie the stick out of Brown, and Brown tips the puck past Patrick Waugh. Here's Lefebvre trying to get him out of there, but he doesn't tie his stick up, and the Red Wings get another goal by being aggressive around the net. That's two tip-ins tonight. In the first three or four games, we rarely saw Red Wing chances or goals like that one. Up for the avalanche and a rocket offset. It just missed. Four to two now to try it on that goal by Brown. The feed in front. Coffee Kozlov also got an assist. Nobody knows the value of protection better than a quarterback. So take it from me, your car needs protection from the sun. So don't just use any old stuff on the vinyl and rubber. Shine and protect them with Armor All Protector. Test proof Armor All blocks up to four times more of the sun's damaging UV rays than the number two brand. Shine's good, but it's not protection. Let's face it, my head shines, but I still wouldn't play without my helmet. So don't just shine your car, armor it with Armor All. Detroit determined to hang on to a two-goal lead in this game. They scored the first two goals in the opening period, Kozlov and Larionov. Ricci made it two to one, Fedorov made it three to one, Ricci made it three to two, now Brown making it four to two. 7.30 left in the second period. Colorado looking to advance to the Stanley Cup final with a win here tonight in Detroit. But it's a tough job by the looks of it. Point could get a shot away. Gusarov, very calm, moved it out. Three Avalanche players line up, and Ozilinch gave it to Sackick. He went after the short side and just missed it. Ah! Gusarov kept it in, but it's not down the ice. And a race for it. The point trying to get in on group. Detroit, Johnson. And the pass to the point. He couldn't make contact. The speedy Red Wings. Breaking away from their own zone. And it's intercepted. Mariano testing wall. This has been a very, very exciting 
Detroit team tonight. Larionov intercepting that pass and driving one at wall. The Red Wings had a two on one rush and it looked to me like it might have been called interference. Watch this. The race for the puck, neither had touched it. And then Johnson, who looked like he might have been called in the interference, misses an easy pass across. And then the giveaway that you talked about, Bob, up the middle by Ozelinch. Ozelinch is an equal opportunity defenseman. Both teams have a chance to score when he's out there. And that was a good example. He leads the Colorado defense core in points. And he leads them in minus this series. Somebody told me to expect a low scoring game tonight. But the Red Wings set the tone by coming after Colorado early. Getting two goals in the first. Matter of fact, there are two goals in a span of a minute and four seconds. It's a 4 2 Detroit lead. In a game, as we keep saying, they must win. Colorado leading the series 3 1 here in game five. Face off to the right of Wall. To try and get it in front. Moving up was Bergevin, but it's picked out over the line by the Avalanche. Coffey backing up. Tipped in over the line again, and Fedorov giving chase. Down to the corner he goes, slamming on the brakes. Left back of the net. Taylor centered it. Taylor went after it. Wall down. Then was upended. Taylor again. Wall stopped it. Bergevin missed it. All oh, Detroit here, folks. Bergevin at the line. Penalty coming up against the Colorado Avalanche. They were running around the Red Wings, or maybe, maybe it's against Detroit. We'll see. This is the second time the whistle has come a little late. And mind you, the second time that Osgood was racing to the bench. Maybe it's two. a Colorado penalty, but it could be a Detroit penalty along with it. I think it is, too. Osgood roared out of the net as he, I think the first penalty was on Colorado and then D Dino Cicerelli got the second one. Here's the first one right here. There's the penalty to start it all off. And Dino Cicerelli gets up. And someone else on the Red Wing team got the penalty. And why Cicerelli would get one on that one. Scott, he's pointing to his watch. He wants a new one and he gets one if he wins the Stanley Cup. But Adam Foote gets one of the penalties. That was clear on the replay. And Cicerelli gets the other one. That isn't so clear. Unless he yapped. Unless he yapped at Kerry Fraser because he didn't realize the penalty had already been called on Adam Foote. And so he gets an unsportsmanlike penalty. Have a look at Kerry Fraser. Now here he is here. That's the penalty on good. On Sportsman Link, that's the sign for the On Sportsman Link. That's two in a row for Dino. They, they didn't call it diving on Dino. I mean, I guess they did. They said it was a cross check and a dive. Diving, it is. Brown didn't think so. Gary Fraser does, and that's the final word. So with 5:40 remaining in the second, Iserman steps up for the Red Wings. Carry on. The shot deflected on a stick into the crowd again. Penalties coming at 14.04. Maybe the cross check was a cross check and it wasn't tough enough to have Cicerelli go to. I don't know, maybe it happened somewhere else, but Cicerelli is gone for unsportsmanlike the dive. Look at this hit on Cicerelli. It's like an Indian rubber ball. Down he goes, up he bounces. It happens the whole game long. The latest Detroit score, Brown got it. His third of the playoffs from Coffee and Kozlov. 12-15. 5-37 left of the period. Detroit leads 4-2. Jimmy Krug. That play won't work. Red Wings are skating well tonight. That's Brown turning back to center ice. And Sylvain Lefebvre, lots of time to move it to Krug. Back to Lefebvre, up through center, too far for Sackett. It's going to be icing, unless Detmarsh touches it. Detmarsh says, no way. It's called icing, that's why he said no way. He thought he had touched it first. Well, Adam Detmarsh with three goals. 
coming in it tonight, led the team in goals. Mark Crawford, you know, was telling me this morning, he said, I know we can give them a tough time tonight, but our emergency state of mind is an artificial one compared to the Red Wings. If they lose, they're out. If we win, lose, we still got two more chances to go to the final. He said, I've tried my best to get it into the heads of our players that this is as big a game for us as it is for them, but it's an impossible coaching assignment. Detroit gets a draw. The Colorado hop on it and get it out there quickly. Lemieux going in. Upended. Claude Lemieux. Got to see that again, boys. He was cutting to the inside, so he thought. And what a hit. Up he goes. Over he goes. And the crowd, do you think they like it? I think so. Konstantinov, a legal, spectacular body check. Lemieux tries to come inside him. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with the check. And even the landing is spectacular. Now, here it is right here. Tries to come back inside. And Konstantinov gambled he'd do that and set him up for some serious hang time. As you watched it at home, you heard the crowd roar because they showed our view up on the big clock at center ice. It was lovely for 20,000 here. Well, Lemieux is okay. He can take it. He takes the puck out for Colorado. Oh, Lemieux made it to Ozilich. Forsberg is with him. He goes around the net. Konstantinov nailed him. And the Red Wings get it out of the zone. And Claude Lemieux is coming back for it. Oh, didn't wait for it. Rusarov shot it ahead to Forsberg, trying to get in on coffee. Lemieux again is on it. Took the shot up high, and Osgood just took it on the shoulder and held it. 4 23 left in the period. That wins by two. Take the neon value. The Joe Louis Arena is alive tonight here in game five because of the score. The Red Wings are leading the Colorado Avalanche four to two in a game. They have to win, and the way they're playing, and that they keep playing that way, they should win this hockey game and send it on to six to the Rocky Mountains again. What a hit by Konstantinov on Claude Lemieux. Yes, that will be the highlight on the highlight tape of uh, many television stations in North America. Stu Grinson back to coaching. So sure looks the part. He was in the warm-up. Scratched, so he's coaching. To center, Detroit. Fedorov couldn't move it in cleanly. Okay, coming away from Fedorov, who's in for checking. Now Ricci, two goals on a night, looking for an assist to set up Young, but it hopped away from Young, and Paul Coffey takes it. Moved it very quickly. Red Wings skate to center. Fedorov brings it up over the line, nearly got to the net, and Young picked it off in time. Stopped at the line. And dumped in back of the net. Brown trying to shoot it out front. He could not. And it'll be Krupp who will clear the zone for Colorado. Lidstrom to center. Shoots it in before he hits the line. Give it to Detroit will make changes. They do quickly. Keen coming back in his own zone for the Avalanche. His pass. No one there. Back in Detroit. Taylor whipped one through the creeks. Ramsey up fast to keep it in deep. Group pinned his man on the boards. Group pulls him there. Puck is in on the dasher board, and the Red Wings trying to move it, and they do. Konstantinov waited at the point, gets the pass. Shoots. That's knocked down by Wall. Got it on the arm. Then it was cleared. Konstantinov. He's all fired tonight. Shoots it down the ice. Avalanche back. Starting out as Ozilich. He wants to rush. And he does. Comes up with a low shot. No problem. Osgood covers up and hangs on to it. We have 2.35 left in the second period. Detroit is leading 4-2. to two. 
shots are 22-20 for Colorado, although I will say this, that Osgood has not had to make as many tough stops this period as he did in the first. And the Detroit Red Wings are playing with a lot more confidence, but that's what two-nothing gives you, not having to scramble from behind as they have in many of their losses in these playoffs in all three rounds. They got the first two goals of the game, the first one at 11.35. And a minute and four seconds later, their second, Kozlov and Larionov. The lead is cut to one twice. The two goal lead again. The new shot low and way off the net. Forsberg can't keep it in. It comes back near his own line and left it. Rosa Lynch once more turning back. Marion off for checking the pass, a neat one up through center to Forsberg. Gets up over the Detroit line and Marion off took it away from him. Gusarov will get back to pick it up in time. Eisen is cruising up there. Avalanche turn. Here they come. Detmarsh brings it in. Can't get the shot away. 1.50 left in the period. Red Wings change. With Lecision back to Yell. He's covered. Yell knocked it down. Set one up in front of the net. Foot moving in. Simon poked it to him. Foot takes a shot. And Osgood, clever with the glove hand. He gave an opening there on the post, but covered it with the glove. Right defensemen are giving up that blue line a little early on the rush. I know they're trying to play it safe with a two goal lead, but if you allow Colorado to get the blue line on every rush, then you're asking for trouble. Paul Coffey makes a nice play here. Loses his glove and goes down to block the shot anyway. Yell on the face off. Foot took the shot. It missed by much from the blue line. Another shot. Put up down in front of the net. And it's slammed wide by Simon. Avalanche keep it in. Simon going after it. Off he took Simon in on the board when he got the puck in back of the net. For Yell, Simon comes in and slams into Coffey. Benaroff was back to shoot it off the boards and relieve the pressure. We have just one minute left in the second. Last minute of play in the three. And it's the Red Wings leading four to two. Foot didn't see it. The decision did, and he cleared it out. Simon turning around, trying to find it. Simon lost it against Brown, who shot it in for Detroit. And Adam Foot back again. Off the boards, it goes to decision. He lifted it high before he got anywhere near center. Here's the point on a break. Going in on goal. Stop. Rebound. Goal. Shot in off the boards, it won't hit the net. And the period comes to a close, and the crowd is up on its feet here at the Joe Lewis Arena as their team heads off for the second intermission, leading five to two. Well, the Colorado Avalanche made two spirited comebacks 
when they twice cut the two goal lead to one. But now with the goal with 30 seconds left in the second period and facing a three goal deficit, they have a monumental mountain to climb and the Red Wings are getting themselves in pretty good shape. Five, two Red Wings, and now we'll join Ron McLean, who's with Adam Deadmarsh. Right you are, Bob. Adam, obviously that's tough. You get back to 3-2. Uh, your thoughts on what happened through two periods? Well, it's uh, it's been very frustrating, obviously. Uh, you know, we didn't come out like we would have hoped tonight, and but there's still one period left, and, uh, you know, we got to show up for it. Mike Reach, you got your big goal, and uh, I'm sure in the first intermission, Mark Crawford said if we can just get one here, and now it's a three-goal deficit, but obviously that'll be your assignment. What did he say uh, after 20 minutes? Well, I didn't really say much. I mean, uh, we knew what it took, and uh, we came within one a couple times, and uh, you know, those are heartbreakers when they get the two-goal lead every time. So, you know, but like I said, we still got a period left, and hopefully we can pull it out. Right. He's relying on you a lot, and you've played with now Joe Sackick and Peter Forsberg on the wing. What's the difference? Well, there's not much difference. They're both great players, obviously, and uh, you know I'm just trying to keep up with both of them. Well, uh, you've had a fantastic playoff, and as your mates say, you're only a babe. Youngest guy on the team. Uh, good luck. Keep it going. Thank you. There's Adam Deadmarsh, the Colorado Avalanche, 5-2 the score. After two periods of play here at Joe Louis Arena, we'll have Don Cherry again. He's doing everything tonight and a whole lot more on Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. What makes the Nissan Quest North America's favorite import mini? Just underway. The Red Wings. Let's see how they play this period. Here's a quick shot right off the bat. Sackick trying to jam one in from the sharp angle. Osgood was in the way of that one. Sackick couldn't set it up. The Detroit on it. McCarty rolling in. Dropped it back to Larionov. To McCarty. He goes back to the net with it. Ozilich stopped his man. And Denmark tries to get going, not as far as center. McCarty again saw Iserman up there, but he was heading for the Detroit bench. Avalanche. They'll have to open it up. Detroit are offside by an eyelash. Federoff a little bit late getting back out. 2-0, first period lead. Ricci made it close on a power play. And then Fedorov opened up a two-goal lead again, and Ricci scored his second on the second power play goal. Brown and Johnson. The Johnson goal, a big one, with only 32 seconds left in the second period. To make it 5-2. Red Wings, you'll see that dump it in now. Every opportunity is going after it. Fedorov with a four check there. He's back to the net, knocking it out front, and Forsberg is turning for Colorado. Up against Brown. He goes to Scott Young. Picks his shot. And that won't do it on Chris Osgood, who showed signs from the early going that he was hot tonight. Well, a long night for the Colorado executives. Charles Lyons, the president of the Colorado Avalanche, Craig Stadler, the resident golf pro of the Colorado Avalanche. He's on the right. He's getting ready for the U.S. Open coming up here in two weeks or so, Bob, in Detroit. Michelle Goulet. But it's been a... And we look at the other end, President Mr. Illich. He's enjoying this a little more than Mr. Lyons is. And a 20 gone in the third. No damage done yet at either end. Johnson creating a loose puck inside the line, but not for long. Decision got it ahead. It's shot in by Ricci. And Draper pound each other. Ricci goes back to the goal with a hit. Ricci and Draper again. Draper trying to hook it outside on the boards, but it didn't get very far. Now Coffey. It's picked back by Keane. A shot by Decision. Nowhere near the net. Away up high. And Detroit will pick it up and get it out. Johnson got it in the center. Draper is bumped, but poked at the rest of the way. It'll be an icing call against Detroit. Well, the Detroit Red Wings are enjoying the fact they're up 5-2, and one of the reasons they're up 5-2 is the three Red Wings, three Red Wings have scored their first goals of the series. Look at this. Here's what you're going to see a lot of in the third period. Three Red Wings, two defensemen and a forward, all backing up. Fedorov, his first. Johnson, his first. Kozlov, his first of this series. Troy, moving it. 
Up as far as center ice, the avalanche on it, and they tuck it back in over the line. Red Wings were all back, though. Very careful. McCarty cruising at center with one man back. Couldn't control it. Avalanche dump it in out of the net as Osgood. Flipped it high for McCarty, who was hit by Sackick. Ramsey, the defenseman, over to help. And the Red Wings are on it to bring it out of the zone. Eiserman, the captain, goes over center. Along the boards, and he couldn't get by on the fade. Oselinch holding it. Eiserman back on his feet, tried to center it. And out for Colorado. Sackick up over the line. Threw the pass in too far for Lemieux, who's bumped by Petchisov. Avalanche keep it in, but the referee, Kerry Fraser, has stopped the play. There's a slashing call against somebody in there. Avalanche, maybe, getting this one. Lemieux, maybe, with the crowd cheering. that inspire us. Skill, pride, and that burning desire to go faster, soar higher, and become stronger. At Chrysler, we're not just building cars, we're building Canada. Lemieux gets the slashing call at 3.02 and a chance for the Red Wings to put this one out of sight. I thought Claude Lemieux would be a lot more noticeable than he is tonight. He takes a nice hit there from Fetisov. He didn't like it, so he takes a shot right there at Konstantinov. A dumb penalty. It comes at 3.02, so we're now coming up to the four-minute mark of period number three. Troy at five, Colorado two, game five, Coffey playing well. Comes in with a pass that's picked off by Keane. And shot down the ice. Petisov coming out slowly. Wraps it in for Detroit. Stopped at the line, a quick shot, and Wass stopped that. In their own zone, Forsberg. He didn't even look, shot it out, he hit the linesman. Wayne Bonney shot on his 43rd birthday, right on the ankle. <laughs> A little reminder. Better off moving up. Gets him with a shot off the boards, trying to set something up for Cicerelli. Nobody can find it. Puck went out of the rink, but for about four seconds there were 11 skaters or 10 skaters and a goalie looking for it. But it, I think it hit the very lip of the boards and went straight up in the air over the glass. Well, the faceoff is outside because that's exactly what happened to the puck on the shoot in. Four minutes and 20 seconds into the third period. 40 seconds left in the penalty. Detroit on the power play, leading by three. And they move it up, Larionov put it in for Eiserman. Eiserman dumped it back to the net. Cicerelli and Larionov. From the corner, Cicerelli and Larionov back and forth. Out it comes, but Lidstrom had no chance to stop that pass. Better off. To Lidstrom. Cicerelli stalled at the Avalanche blue line. Eisenman overskates it. Now it's fed into him. Got it back to Mariano. The short pass again to Eisenman. Back of the net. He's out front. Eisenman dangerous. Shoots. That was blocked in front of Wad. Set down the ice. Penalty 
is over now. Detroit with a three-goal lead. Coming up to the six-minute mark in the third. In a game they had to win. And looking like winners so far tonight. This is Draper. Saw the man open. Not for long, the point was covered. Big Huey Crook trying to feed it through to somebody. You cut through everyone and right to the net. Red Wings back to get it out. Taylor went up there and shot it in. Wall left the net. Trying to move his team. Scooped it away. Touched by Osgood, so no ice in. Out for Fedorov. Through center. Carries in well. And on the wing, Brown. A little anxious. Offside. Well, Dino Cicerelli and Sylvain Lefebvre having quite a war in front of the Colorado net. Later on that... Earlier on that last shift, Cicerelli, who's got little wee equipment, shoulder pads and gloves, and Lefebvre, a big, strong guy, and here they are fighting for territory. The puck's at the point. These two guys don't know where it is. And then after the last kick, they talk to each other going to the board. I think my beard's better than yours, Dino says. Trying to solve the Red Wings in this fifth game. And been unable to do it. Red Wings coming out. All Pistons firing, getting two quick goals. In a span of 104, midway through the first period. They have not looked back. Second, put it onto the stick of Federal, and that's an easy carrying play. But it will be an icing call against Detroit. Well, the Detroit Red Wings are trying to play it safe now. You'll never see a three forwards get caught. They don't mind icing the puck. The first rule will be, if in doubt, get it out. And the second one will be, if you get it out, get it in. Don't try long, cross ice, low percentage passes. They need the goals. We don't. Don't give them any. Make them earn them. Face off to the right of Osgood. Won by Detroit. They are controlling all departments of the hockey game now. To center, they roll it in. Konstantinov did his job. And they line up waiting for the Avalanche to try it again. Adam Foot to center where he's covered. He has to shoot it in. Konstantinov back hit hard. Move the puck a bit though, over on the boards. Marianov to Petisov, to Eiserman, and he hooked it away to Ice. So again, coming up with Gusarov. Again, he can't handle the second pass. Red Wings shoot it down the ice, too high though. And it went into the crowd. 7-26 have gone by in the third. Great vans, one low price. At $19,998, there's no time to wait on the special factory allotment of 96 Pontiac Transports and Chevy Luminous. For only $19,998 or $249 a month, you get a 180 horsepower V6, four speed automatic, air conditioning, four wheel anti lock brakes, AM FM stereo. Plus, the only van with dent proof polymer body panels. Add the convenience of individual modular seating, and there is no time to wait. Lumina Transport at your Chevy and Pontiac dealers today. Rediscover Canada with Ford. Call 1-888-456-5555 for your free vacation guide to Canada. And welcome back to the Joe Louis Arena. I'm Bob Cole with Harry Neal in the booth. Ron McLean and Don Cherry along with us. We are coming up to the eight-minute mark of the third period. And it looks like Detroit will extend the series back to Denver for the sixth game. 5-2 Detroit, 25-24 shots on goal in favor of Colorado. 
Good chances to score. Detroit 14, Colorado 9. Coffey back in the lineup tonight and looking sharp from his defense spot. Wall will have to play this, negating any icing call. And three Avalanche move up on it. Trying desperately to get something going. It's shot in back of the net, and Bergevin, the Red Wings, has it. Moving it up to Cicerelli. He took a step or two and got rid of it. Murray played it back for Colorado. Group shoots it in. Denmark and Murray come up after it with Keane, the other winger. But it'll be Draper and Taylor for Detroit to get it out. Shut down the ice by Fedorov. And Lefebvre clears it back in. Coffee. Joy moving the puck quickly now. Sylvain Lefebvre saw open ice and put the puck up there. Ricci, he's got a hot hand tonight with the two Colorado goals. Ricci centered one. Nobody out the line. Where's Ozilich? In deep. All the way back for Lefebvre. Ozilich got back to pick it up. And he wants to go again. Ozilich. Up to center, penalty coming up against Detroit. Ricci was into something near the blue line, and I think he got to it. He got high stick by Johnson. Ricci was coming up through the neutral zone. Johnson was trailing him, and he tried to impede him, and the stick got up under, over the shoulders of Ricci, so he will with 11.04 to go. Greg Johnson served two minutes or less. Here's the penalty now. Ricci runs a little interference for Ozilinch. And you can see how Ricci lifted his arms up to get out of the way of the high stick, and the stick cuffed him in the face. Well, plenty of time left in this third period. And the Colorado power play has been red hot tonight. Ricci, he's on the bench now, as you see, has scored the Colorado goals while having the man advantage. So it's two for two tonight, as you see. Getting better, only five for 20 in the series. Mike Ricci, a five game point streak, one goal, five of six, assists for six points, and he's tied for fourth in the NHL playoffs with 11 assists. They win the draw inside the line. Saki dishes off to the left side, Ozilich, fanned on it. Back for Lemieux, couldn't handle it. Near the line, Saki, he'll shoot one in. Osgood to save with a stick. Detroit can't get the stick on it. It's back to the line of Sackick again. In on the boards with that play. Kaminsky can't do much with it. Ozilinch was in there to pick it up. Slapped it into the corner. Lemieux kept it in deep. Red Wings, three of them on the boards. They get it out. 40 seconds gone on the penalty. Here come the Avalanche again. Sackick's high shot. Just missed. Marianov had a chance to clear it and failed. Avalanche on it, out front of the net. Lemieux had a stick left it, couldn't get a shot. Forsberg rolled it in. Larry on all without a stick. Comes back to Lemieux, shoots, blocked. Cleared, the far side, and out. Eiserman a great job. Now Forsberg, trying to stick handle by Brown and couldn't. Kaminsky centered it. He was lying to his left, poking at it. It got into the pads of the goalie, and he held it with 39 seconds left in the penalty to Greg Johnson. Well, the Red Wings had a man short, and for a lot of this penalty, number eight, Larry Onoff, did not have a hockey stick. So they were a man and a half short. And they were lucky at times, the Red Wings, that the Colorado Avalanche players just couldn't find the puck, and here Osgood freezes it. 39 seconds left in Johnson's penalty. Here's a great play by a smart player, Larry Onoff. He doesn't have a stick. Ozilinch passes the puck and then tries to go to the slot. Larry Onoff wouldn't allow the goal. You can't stop the pass. Young keeping it in for Colorado. They're on the power play and Gusserov failed to stop it at the point. Wall, who was very slow getting back to his net. He came out to move it to the corner. 
Only 15 seconds left with a man advantage for Colorado. They'll have to hustle. And Gusarov shoots one in. Taken on the boards by Deadmarsh. Young one in there quickly. Bergevin. Played it. Comes near the line and scooped out. Penalty is over. That's Johnson, number 23, coming in hard. So Waugh played it to Gusarov. 8.50 remaining in the third period. 5-2 Detroit. Avalanche shoot it in, but they want to make changes. So, a little forechecking. And it's cleared away by the Red Wings. Ozilich got it ahead. Sylvain Lefebvre drilled one into the corner. Red Wings do not get it out. Moving up is Ozilich. Centered it in the scramble. The puck goes back of the net. Detroit will move it ahead. They don't get it out over the line. Clint swept it into the corner. The Ashes left. Fetty saw back of the goal waiting. Now it's moved to the line and knocked down by Simon. Didn't know he had a chance to clear it ahead. And the Red Wings get it out. Eight minutes left. Third period. Red Wings by three goals. Eiserman beating it in deep. And Lefebvre around the net. Group comes to center. Weaves away from Eiserman. Gets up to the line. And Eiserman skated alongside. And then just backhanded the puck back to center. Keane is tied up. Larion off is not. Shot it right at Denmark, though. And Ramsey shot in. Wall. Stopping it for Lecision and Huey Group. Lifting a high one away, and the Red Wing fans are applauding. They know their team has everything under control tonight. No dangerous rush. No three on twos. No two on one. Not for Colorado. But now Lemieux is trying something. Shoots it back to the net. Stays along the boards and kept in up the line to Detmarsh. Detmarsh waits. Penalty coming up against Detroit. Detmarsh. Red Wing player Taylor touching the puck. And here comes the penalty. Fedorov's going to get the penalty. When it comes to shopping for auto parts, come into UAP Napa because you can trust your local UAP Napa auto parts store for superior parts availability expert advice, and friendly service. UAP Napa. And watch for UAP Napa's Looking Good Flyer. Sale is on May 13th to June 8th. So when you need quality parts and accessories, put your trust in UAP Napa Auto Parts. UAP Napa, the real auto parts people. As if an increase in interior space, refinement, and quiet wasn't enough. For a short while, our Civic sedan comes with an exceedingly attractive lease rate. We think that's cause for celebration. Not to burst your bubble, but you better move fast, because this rate won't wait. Sergey Fedorov a little anxious, and he draws the minor penalty. Well, Fedorov on this rush is the left wing in the old left wing lock uh, strategy, and he does a nice job not allowing Forsberg to go to the net, but he spoils the smart defensive play by this play, and he gets a penalty for it. It's an interference penalty on Fedorov at 13.08. So Colorado again on the power play. Shut down by Detroit. Their last opportunity. They had just one shot, but they have two power play goals in the game. And another penalty coming up against the Red Wings. Wall will clear the puck. It comes to center. They should give it to the Red Wings, but they do not. The new move in. Oh, they decide to clear it in back of the net. I can't believe this. <laughs> Under seven minutes left, no penalty being called. Waugh decided, or the coach, and he's going to leave the net. And they'll try to pull out all the stops. They might do it here. Kavinsky was poked. Off the 
the puck before he could put it by Osgood. This is a first in the Stanley Cup for me. <laughs> I think it's a smart play, Bob. They're Why down not? by three. Okay. Pull the goalie. If they score on the power play, they got a half a shot. I'll buy it. But for a moment, it looked as if a penalty was to be called because all of a sudden to our left with the play moving in, wall left. And that was a set deal by Mark Crawford. To get him out of there. And let's try to bag one. It might light a fire. And if it wasn't for a great play by Chris Draper, they may well have scored one on the power play with the goalie out. And here come the avalanche and breakaway right here. And here comes Draper with a diving poke check to save a possible goal as Kamensky was waltzing in alone on Osgood. You remember seeing that? No, I don't. I, I haven't seen it with this much time to go, but I'm giving Mark, Prada, Mark Crawford credit for a good idea. On the power play, they're down three. The Red Wings probably didn't realize what was happening because he pulled them while the play was on. Did he ever? He's going again, by the way. He's leaving. Now he'll have to make up his mind whether to hurry back. And it's a good thing because Draper is coming in. Got the shot, and Wall was back in time to make the save. 50 seconds left in the minor penalty to Federal. They got everything tonight now. Wall will go again, I'm sure as they move to center. That play backfired. They have an offside. They have to clear the zone. Wong is on the bench. Six attackers, empty net for Detroit. And Sackick broke it up in time. Bergevin, a lot one in. This one might just misses. High step. Red Wing player can't touch it. Ozilinch can. He does. And comes out. They shoot it in from their own side of center. Icing has been waved off. Konstantinov cleared it out the center ice. Only eight seconds left in the minor penalty to Fedorov, and in it goes again. They protected Osgood pretty good. Not down at the line. Law is still on the bench. Empty net is up there. Fedorov looking everywhere for the puck. This is something. 440 left in the third. Six Avalanche are on there. Something new by Mark Crawford. Well done. Usarov, very cool back there. 4.28 left. And Wall got back. He had just left the bench when the puck was in center ice. This crowd had their heads spinning. Give Mark Crawford credit. Oh, yeah. It's a long shot gamble, but it's better than sitting on your hands when you're down three goals. They shoot it in. Wall stays in. Good thing because Taylor is turning. Doesn't get too far against Sackney. Coffee is moving up. Lots of room for Coffee. Centering pass hopped away from Taylor. The point is in front of the net. Here's Adam Foote coming out. He gets to center. Walls 30 feet out of the net. Backs up again with Detroit on the puck inside their line. I don't know whether to look right or left. But Walls in. You know Osgood's not going anywhere. Brown dropped it back. Federal. Gets loose at the blue line. He's upended. Well, Wall won't leave for a while. It'll be a Colorado penalty and a Detroit power play coming up. In the wind and the rain, I found myself. Oh, I was never really lost. It took me this long to realize I was looking the wrong way. Unfortunately, our eyes look out at the world, not in at ourselves. So even though at this time I find myself on this road, there are at least as many roads as there are people. And through the wind and the rain, the thunder roars. Heat traffic, things are moving pretty slowly. Stop and go southbound due to that construction. Let's face it, the weather's not helping out either for low visibility. And we've got traffic reduced to just one lane. There's a car company which believes that a phone with a set of wheels has always been a terrific idea. That's why they created a customer communication center. So no matter what your automotive needs, all you have to do is call 1-800-GM-DRIVE. The company is General Motors. Well, this should do it for this game. With only 3.30 left, For Forsberg gets a minor penalty. He trips Sergei Fedorov right there. Forsberg and Kamensky, two big scores 
have gone dry in this round. We want to make it perfectly clear. You'll find guaranteed low prices at your Canadian Tire store every day. If you find a better price anywhere, we'll match it. Guaranteed. Well, they'll be writing a few things about Mark Crawford tomorrow, and they'll all be pretty good things, I would suggest. Hey. Give them credit, like you said. Down roll three the goals. Roll them the length of the track. Down three goals, and... Under seven minutes left of the third period and nothing working really. I think that was the key. Detroit covering very well in their own end, so Crawford one of the extra man in. And maybe get something going. He tried, it didn't happen. It's still five to two Detroit and a chance to make it six. Lucer, although, will move it out of his own zone. Pull away from a check, give it to Keane. Keane set it up. And Murray's shot is blocked by Osgood. Four Red Wings line up and come up at center. Led by Federoff. Steaming in there. Back to Lidstrom. Back to Coffey. Wasn't ready for that. Gave it to Lidstrom. Coffey again got it out. Cicerelli dropped it neatly at the line. And it's slammed in by Brown. Dang. Two minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the third period. Detroit staying alive with a fine effort tonight. Brown side of the net pass gets in front. Comes back to Fetisov at the blue line. Ahead again. Johnson, Fetisov. Other side. Johnson. No shot. Red Wings buzzing. And this series is going to go to a sixth game in the mountains of Denver, Colorado. On Wednesday night. Eight thirty Eastern. You're invited to join us. One twenty-five left in the crowd. Or oh, they really what a great season, the Red Wings turned out for them. And here they were facing elimination tonight. And the crowd in anticipation of a victory, a little nervous about a loss. Now see that the Red Wings have a minute left. They're going to gain six. That brings the roar up a notch or two. Offside, avalanche. Completely outskated tonight by Detroit. Stand by. Joe Lewis Arena. I'm Bob Cole with Harry Neal, Ron McLean, and Don Cherry, and Jake. And it's a three goal lead for Detroit. Patrick Waugh has been out and into that net for the last 10 minutes or so. Well, there are some penalties handed out here just as we went to commercial. Adam Detmarsh got tangled up. They've already sent him to the dressing room. I don't know who on Detroit is going to get it, but well, it, it well might be Fetisov. 54 seconds to go. And it could be a long 54 seconds. Louis Krupp fishing for octopus here. I think he's got one. And he won't pick it up. Where's Al when we need him? Here comes the, one of the octopus caddies. Right plane number 33, Chris Draper, H2 minute minor for roughing, call it 1905. I 
think this is just to cool everybody down a bit. Foot and Draper roughing penalties. Somebody had to go with a big skirmish. Well, the Red Wings with five even strength goals in tonight's game had only four in the first four games. And they scored 325 goals this season. So five on five, they've been asleep, but not tonight. Another icing call to slow the proceedings or the agony, depending on which side you speak of. Well, I think the Colorado Avalanche learned a little lesson tonight, and lots of teams who have been up 3-1 learn it. It isn't over, even though you've got them down with your knee on the chest. Now, the Red Wings have to regroup and walk into Denver and win a hockey game to cause a seventh one back here. They're not doing it the easy way. It took uh, double overtime to defeat St. Louis, as you see Paul Coffey checking out for the night. He had a pretty good night. Yes, he did. He played his best game in a while. Decision stopped by Osgood. 40 seconds left in this one. Johnson has stopped. Fed in by Erickson. I think his first shift tonight. Anders Erickson, the rookie. Scotty dressed it, dressed a seven defenseman tonight. Simon came right over and cross-checked Bergevin. And Simon's going to go with 20 seconds to go. I don't know whether Bergevin's going to. He'll go to the room with so little time remaining. A pointless move and a 5-2 game. Let's have a look at it right here. Bergevin dumps the puck in, and then Simon comes across with a decapitating attempt. Simon's going to get a penalty, I believe. No, well, maybe he isn't. Just get the game over with. That's what Kerry Fraser said. Bergevin and Simon are out of here. Bergevin with his head on. Our the for Simon, Detroit County number 27, Mark Bergevin. Couple of minors before it's done. That should be it. Two quick goals. Fenway part of the first period. Kozlov and Larionov. That did enough damage. The momentum, all Detroit. Ricci was given a goal. Then Fedorov got it back. Ricci, another power play goal. And Brown got it back. And Johnson scored with 32 seconds left of the second. And that's all she wrote. Unless this one goes in. Brown! And Wall's a way out to stop it. That's a good stop and a nice try by Brown. He faked the shot. Down went Patrick Waugh. And then I'm not sure whether Brown was trying to slide it under Patrick Waugh when he should have put it over him. But Waugh, who won't give up on a play that looks like he's down, out, and gone, makes a pretty darn good stop with seven seconds left. Shots are 28 26 in the game in favor of Colorado. Well, that won't do it. The 5-2 on the board will do it. Detroit stays alive. As the horn goes to win this fifth game here in Detroit, Michigan. Only 5-3 shots in favor of Colorado in the third. Yes, they're happy here at the Joe Lewis. It's been quite a year for this crowd, numbering over 20,000 just about every game. Scotty. Nothing has changed. It's, let me see, we got another game where? In the mountains of Denver. Coming up in 48 hours. So stay with us. Final here tonight. Detroit 5, Colorado 2. What makes the Nissan Quest North America's favorite import minivan? Let's take a closer look. There's dual airbags, standard air, V6 and front wheel drive, versatile Quest track seating for seven. Available keyless remote entry. Plus the most comprehensive minivan warranty going. And now there's over 100 improvements for 96. If you missed anything, talk to your Nissan dealer. Because it's time to expect more from a minivan. Your future will be shaped by the decisions you make today. Start to create a solid, secure future with Alberta Savings Certificates. 
These certificates, issued by the province of Alberta, offer competitive rates of interest, ensuring continued financial growth. When you choose Alberta Savings Certificates, you've reached the crest of financial security. Until May 31st, you can purchase your Alberta Savings Certificates at any participating financial institution, investment dealer, or by calling this toll-free number. Dell Lawnmower. Dull axe. Dull, dull, dull. Why work this hard to sharpen your tools? Get the amazing new Miracle Sharp. The liquid sharpener that sharpens your tools by soaking them. Its secret formula dissolves away dull and damaged edges, leaving your tools rust-free, super clean, and factory sharp. Any blade can be restored, even those that can't be sharpened any other way, and it's reusable. Get the amazing Miracle Sharp liquid sharpener today. Molson Hockey Night in Canada on CBC. Brought to you by Molson Canadian. Back at Jolo Serena, bound for Denver. There are the Molson three stars this evening. Doug Brown, a goal and an assist. Sergey Fedorov, same thing. And Mike Ricci, uh, great for Colorado. Here's Scotty Bowman, and Doug Brown's in the shot, as you can see, too. And Doug will get to you in a moment. Uh, Scotty, first, your thoughts on a victory tonight? Well, certainly, Ron, we came up with the key goals at the right time. Uh, you know, when it looked like they were closing the gap, a couple of power play goals. And uh, we we're generally pleased with the way we came out early. We, uh, we got the first two goals. We're not too happy with taking so many penalties. We have to find a way in, in Colorado because we took most of our penalties not in the defensive zone, attacking zone, neutral zone. They got two goals. They got back in the game. So we got to be like the Florida Panthers, the Panthers, 46 minutes without a penalty. If we can do that, we got a better chance to win. Great show. Keep her Thank going. You. And uh, Doug, I can't say enough about uh, you jumping in. Scotty, of course, is the king of uh, line juggling and who should be fresh and how they should be inspired and what a job you did. Uh, how do you feel about it? Well, thanks. Yeah, he gave me an awful lot of ice tonight and it was fun to play with Sergey and Kazi and those guys make so many things happen out there that you just keep working and you know they're going to do the right things. Uh, give me a brief look ahead to game six. So what do you think you did best, especially when it was 3-2 tonight? To get uh, back on. I, I, we stayed patient and waited for opportunities and uh, forechecked hard so that and try not to give them too many. They got a lot of shots tonight, but I, uh, they had a lot of good chances in the first period. After that, I don't know how many good chances they had. Congratulations. Thank you. There's Doug Brown, the number one star this evening. Gritty efforts by Detroit. Paul Coffey, bad back. Osgood bounces back. Detroit sends it to game six. They'll play game five of this series, Florida Pittsburgh, tomorrow evening at the Igloo. That's 7.30 Eastern nationwide, and of course, because of this 5-2 outcome, we're off to Colorado for Game 6 of the Western Conference Final in 48 hours. For all of us, thanks for watching, and good night.